A while back, I made a video about the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, or MWOW. This was before it had come out, and I mostly talked about using n as cannon fodder for historical villainy in movies. Well, I recently sat down and watched MWOW with some family members, and yep, it was somehow several leagues worse than I even imagined. So let's talk about that. Right before watching the film, and also in that video, I said that this movie basically looks like a British version of Inglorious Bastards, with Guy Ritchie filling in for Quentin Tarantino, and that prediction could not have been more wrong. You see, in Inglorious Bastards, Brad Pitt's character says he wants 100 n scalps. In WoW, Alan Richson says he wants 100 n hearts. In Inglorious Bastards, there is a tense scene where an undercover character who speaks perfect German lets the fact that they are a spy slip with a very subtle variation in communication. Whereas in WoW, an undercover character who otherwise speaks perfect German gives away that they aren't who they say they are with a very subtle variation of the language. See how different they are, you idiot? But the issues of WoW's originality pale in comparison with the film's other problems, namely that it is horrendously constructed and excruciatingly boring. It's hard to overstate what the name Guy Ritchie meant in the early 2000s. This was at the height of DVD culture when movies like Snatch or Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels were entrenched in the popular culture. In fact, if you went to someone's place, there was roughly an 80% chance you'd spot a Snatch DVD and would start quoting it. You like dags? Oh yeah, I like dogs. Those films are so sharp, tight, and well-written that we were all quoting characters who mostly spoke gibberish. That was the power of Ritchie, the writer, the storyteller, and the director. So so going in, I wasn't expecting much, but I at least expected to have an array of characters with interesting or at least memorable things to say. And that's what makes this movie so disappointing. It's like someone forgot to write anything interesting. The main character gets the drop on some n****s and is about to kill them. You know what his big kill line is? Very good. The spy woman turns the table on the film's main villain and is about to kill him. You know what she says? Yeah. No. That's seriously the dialogue in this movie. Guy Ritchie's movies are also known for having a plethora of interesting side characters that add depth and life to the film's world. Bricktop, Boris the Blade, Bullet Tooth Tony. Those are three that start with the letter B in the same movie. Mwow seems to want to introduce them, but instead of having them say or do anything, they get pushed into the background so it can carry on with indiscriminately killing n****s. Oh yeah, that's really the only thing the movie seems to be interested in. Killing n****s. And when I say killing n****s, I don't mean in any way that's interesting or even cathartic. I mean, the characters casually walk around and shoot them with silencers, usually before they even know they're there. So about one third of the movie's runtime is like watching a GoldenEye speedrunner play the same level over and over again. And the effect this has on the film is it completely torpedoes any tension in the narrative. Oh, our cover's blown. Here they come. Now we're in for it. Oh, nope. All their shit is exploding because of the explosives we already planted. Easy. I know they're not but if you never show them as being capable of doing anything, if you hardly even show them fighting back, even the act of fulfilling your deepest n killing fantasies won't make it anything but fucking boring. If you put a gun to my head, showed me this movie, and then asked me to guess who wrote and directed it with my life on the line, I would confidently say Zack Snyder. I would never in a million years guess that the man who wrote and directed Snatch was capable of taking this tale of undercover spies conducting a massive heist behind enemy lines and killing hundreds of n and make it this painfully boring. I would have sworn this was made by the same man who produced Sucker Punch, a movie whose subject was similarly full to burst with action and spectacle, but ultimately was a horrendous, painful slog to watch. That's Guy Ritchie now, not the British equivalent to Tarantino, not the man who made the razor-sharp action crime heist flicks you remember, but the British equivalent to Zack Snyder. That's how far he's fucking fell.